In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. The first step to God. Everlasting Gospel delivered to the entire world from the Everlasting Gospel Center at Calabar, Nigeria, West Africa by the Holy Spirit of Truth and Supernatural Teacher, Leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the sole spiritual head of the universe and leader of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, which is the Kingdom of God on Earth. Brethren, please listen attentively to the divine revelations of the everlasting gospel. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. Refrain from committing every bit of sin. First lesson, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Second lesson, Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. Golden text, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. Quote, Today, we are going to reveal to you the first step to take to qualify you as a man of God, worker of God, and a child of God. This is what is really meant by baptism. As a first step, it is so necessary that it must not be skipped. We are prepared to work for God the moment we decide to take this step. Otherwise, we are not yet ready. Preparedness to work for God also means abandoning all earthly things and giving up ourselves wholly to doing good alone. Take this decision now and you are on the first step up the ladder to God. After taking a strong footing on the first step, we are just about to advance. We have not yet finished the race excepting that we can count on the first step as a good start to enable us press on to the mark. The race that lies ahead of everyone to run is doing good. But the trouble with the world is that none is wise enough to know that we cannot do that which is good if we do not first of all stop doing that which is bad. Therefore, brethren, let us all continue in doing good throughout our lives. First lesson, Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. From the above text, you can see that when you, are, you have forgotten worldly things and refrained from sin, you have done only one thing. Many things are still lying before us to do. For instance, patience is there to be had. The Holy Spirit will direct us and our conscience will be worried if we do not do the first thing first. That is, if we do not refrain completely from sin before attempting to have that patience. To what can we compare the abandoning of sin as the first duty of a Christian? It is like the clearing up of a bush which should be done first before the trimming of the trees. In the process of making a farm, if the process is reversed, and the trimming is done before the clearing, the trimmings will fall over the undergrowth and the bush will not take fire. Thus, it will not be possible to clear it for planting. For this reason, the greatest and foremost thing a Christian should do is to confess his sins and be baptized. In short, he should first refrain from all manners of sin and the fire of the Holy Ghost will direct him to do good always. We can compare 
anybody who does not take this this step to a man who misses the consecutive order of counting from one thus missing the first thing he cannot have his sum correct because he ignores the first number thus also anybody who has not completely refrained from sin should not count himself as a servant of god he is not fit to do anything for god this does not mean that any person who has refrained from all sins is holy or good enough before god such a person has not yet started the work of god until he learns to, to love everybody as himself abandoning sin only shows that the person believes in god and his son and that he is prepared to follow god and to do his will he is determined to go forward he has begun to hear the gospel and is different from the sinful person who can never be counted among those who hear the gospel through he be though he be preacher of it so let all those who are now prepared to follow christ refrain from every bit of sin and once they have refrained from sin let them not go back to it but let them go on loving and spreading the teaching of our lord jesus christ second lesson romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 2 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein after you have been taken out of sin would you like to go back to it so that your soul may perish the scripture answer god forbid anybody who stood before god and denounced satan the world and sin should under no circumstances go to attach himself to these things in second peter chapter 2 verses 20 to 22 it is written for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog has turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire even if you are to be killed suffer death instead of going back to sin after you have abandoned it the practice of goodness is the only thing that can sustain a man to be sinless so if you have actually abandoned sin be sure of your salvation by holding on to doing nothing but good otherwise you are not yet saved and if you go back to sin your last position is worse than the first the person who has abandoned all sins is like a man sent to england to study he has to resign his former appointment before leaving for further studies if he does not do well in his studies and is sacked from university he comes back without any degree he has lost both his job and the university qualification and is bound to suffer so let all of us who have abandoned sin proceed at once to do the gospel we should not fail to do good after we have stopped doing evil otherwise we shall confuse ourselves and be in a dilemma 
If we have been making such mistakes in the past, let us resolve from today never to do so again. It is said that when a person makes the first mistake, he is a fool. But when he makes a second one, he is a bloody fool. It is indeed foolish to return to sin after we have abandoned it. We may ask ourselves, why did we refrain from it all at first? If, if sin was all that good, why did we not continue in it? Again, if we go back to sin, shall we find any good as we perhaps thought there would be? If we won't, what gain then do those still cling to sin have? What then then? What gain then do those who still cling to sin have? If you abandon hundreds of sin but still retain one, you will suffer for that one sin. Just like a person who has not refrained from 100 sin. What is the use of refraining from adultery and fornication but still holding on to anger? It is written that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If you have refrained from all other sins but continue to beat your children, are you not still in the grip of Satan? Has the scripture not forbidden you from tormenting your children? In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 it is written, And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You may stop actually flogging your children, but if you continue to threaten them with such words as, I will beat you to death. Are you not committing sin? This you know is provoking the children to wrath. So, if there is any sin still remaining in you, remove it right now in order to fulfill the first and the most important condition to qualify you as a man, to qualify you as a Christian and a child of God. Among us here today are those who have ab ab abandoned all sins. There are also among us those who have one sin left. Those who say they will leave sin gradually. And there are those who say they are not yet ready to refrain from any sin now. I ask, what use is there in refraining, in re what use is there in retaining even a single sin? There is no sense in this thing. The only wise people are those who have refrained from all sins and will never go back to them in their lives. Everybody wants God. If you have one sin left, when are you going to take just the first step to God. If you say you will not leave sin until God does his work and change you, when will that be? When will God do his work? Is God not doing his work now that you are hearing this gospel? May I assure you that God is doing his work now. If you change, it is better. But if you continue in sin, you are laboring in vain. You are building on sand, thus making in vain the work of God in our midst. All those who have only one sin still remaining are the same as those who have forsake as those who have forsaken any sin. All and all those who have forsaken all sins for a while and have gone back to commit them are like those who have never refrained from any sin. If you abandon sin for 20 years and then suddenly in the 21st year you commit it again, you are even worse 
than the person who has been committing sin continuously throughout his life. What then is the benefit you have derived from the many years you had stayed and avoided sin? May I remind you again that if you have refrained from all sins but do not do any good service to humanity, there is no virtue in you and your effort to refrain from sin is of no benefit. Golden text, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, faith, goodness, godliness, love, patience, meekness. This lesson explains what is meant in the first lesson concerning reaching forth unto those things which are before. Let us who have therefore refrained from sin now go after charity, peace, humility, kindness, and all the rest of virtues. And let us note while doing this that if we don't first of all refrain from all sins, we cannot do any good. We cannot do the work of God. Anger is of Satan. Hatred, lack of faith, stubbornness, and hard-heartedness, and lying are all the works of Satan. But love, faithfulness, obedience, forgiving one another, truth, are all of God. If you do not first do away with everything satanic, how can you have anything that is from God? If you do not stop telling lies, how can you begin to speak the truth? If you do not leave Satan, how can you hold on to God? Now brethren, let us all refrain from sin and go after virtue. Let us remember first, the first step which is refraining from all manner of things. If you do this, we shall find salvation for our souls. Those who have ears, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. First lesson, John chapter 8 verse 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Anybody who commits sin is bound to suffer. Even the least bit of sin is bound to bring untold punishment and death to any person who commits it. Do you then see why we have to... Do you then see why we have no peace in our lives? You should not follow anybody to tempt you at all. You should not follow or allow anybody to tempt you to fall. This is the reason why you should not find fault with anybody. There is no portion of the scriptures which says that you have the right to judge others or revenge. God is the maker of everything and we should leave everything to him to do for us. But when we sin, we are the cause of all our troubles because God himself does not commit sin and is therefore not responsible for anything we may suffer in consequence of sin. The punishment we get by committing sin is from the sin, not from God. All bad things bad dreams, quarreling, and discomfort come from sin. That is why it is said that the wages of sin is death. At the time Adam and Eve did not commit sin in the Garden of Eden, they never lacked anything. They were never ill. They neither quarreled nor fought, nor did they suffer any disgrace. In fact, they were not worried in any way, but from the day they committed sin, evil followed them in everything and in every way. 
when we have known this, why are our hearts hardened, our eyes closed, and we still remain in sin? Why do we allow our hands to touch or do evil? If anybody commits sin, all his words, eyes, ears, and anything within and about him are turned evil. All this grace, tears, and torments reach him because of sin. Bad thoughts come from sin. What is worse about committing any sin at all is the fact that one sin giveth birth to another. When we sin, we are punished. But it does not end there. We may wonder why we who have not been stealing are doing so now. Have we forgotten that knock we gave that little child on the head which is still which is sinful enough to urge us on to commit another sin stealing? This is a very strong reason why we should run away from every bit of sin. No sinner knows God. Those who know God never commit any sin. If you like, give them hun give them millions of naira to induce them to commit sin. You will never get them to do so. They rather choose to die than to commit any bit of sin. Why? Because they know that to sin is to die. I have told you that if a man is careful enough to avoid all manner of sin, he will not die forever. He will not suffer from any disgrace or illness. But when you feel the slightest pain, trace the cause, it will lead to sin. Any stain of sin on the soul is like a black spot on a pure white. It cannot be hidden. Likewise, if you commit the slightest sin, you need not inform God before he knows it all. And you will be disciplined unfailingly. Therefore, if any person says he will commit sin because God is merciful and will forgive him, he is making a great mistake. Such a person does not know God. He, he is a slave to sin and until he denounces sin, he will not be free to do any good thing, even to be able to ask God for forgiveness. Sin is the cause of death. Again, Adam and Eve died because they committed sin. Christ is living today because he did not commit sin. If you do not commit sin, you will not die. A person who commits no sin does not know any juju, witchcraft, mermaid, or hatred. He does not know what suffering or death. What he does not know want suffering or death. But if you do anything that God forbids in his holy scriptures, you will die because you have committed the sin of disobedience which Adam and Eve had committed and died. From the day you commit sin, you have become a slave to sin and sin will begin to rule you. Let us all who do not want to be slaves to sin refrain from it. Even if you are to be starved for a hundred years, suffer it instead of being persuaded to commit sin and eat sumptuously every day. Even if you are promised the whole world, if you would, if you would sin, remember Satan made the same promise to Christ in the desert, but he refused all, he refused all because all those would lead him to death and make him lost eternal life. Shun the devil, the world, and all that is in it. If our forefathers in ignorance did commit 
sin and will perish. Should we who claim to be wise today also commit the same sin and perish like them? And if we willfully commit sin, what excuse will bring us out of the consequences of it? We are taught to avoid sin. This is best measure against death. Those of us who are wise know that prevention is better than cure. And the way to prevent death is by refraining from sin. Where then lies the wisdom of those who say they will commit sin and afterwards come back to ask God for forgiveness? Once a sin is committed and once a sin is committed, the consequences used to be disastrous and death often follows.